Welcome, my name is Lasse and in this video I'm going to show you how we can use the automation app to integrate ServiceNow with SharePoint. More specifically, the use case that we're going to look at is how we can use ServiceNow to order a new SharePoint site and then have the automation app automatically provisioning that SharePoint site and making it available to the end user. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off here in, uh, in Azure in our automation account because when we're building this integration, we want to use a module called PNP uh, PowerShell. And um, to install this, if you have already installed it, you can skip this part. But but if you haven't, uh, go on the modules here, click on Add module, module, and then we're just going to browse from Gallery, and then you just search for for PNP PowerShell, and uh, and pick the first one, and select. And then we're going to use PowerShell 5.1 um, and uh, import. So while that's importing, we're also going to create an, an app registration. So if we go back to the, to the front page here, and then we go under Active Directory, go under App Registrations, and click uh, New Registration. So we're going to use this app to, uh, to authenticate with, uh, with SharePoint Online. We can just call this one uh, SharePoint. Uh, demo. Uh, these are fine, so let's just uh, register. And then um, under, uh, under API permissions, we need to add permissions. And just browse down here and, and find SharePoint. And then we're going to add some uh, application permissions. And the one that we're going to do is just sites uh, full control. Click on Add Permissions, and then you need to uh, grant admin consent for these uh, permissions. Yes, good. And then we also need to create a certificate that we will use for the authentication. So if you go under here under Certificate and Secrets, go under Certificate, and then we need to upload a certificate. Uh, there are many ways that you can generate a certificate. Uh, I'm just going to use uh, a, a, a runbook. So if I go into to runbook manager here in uh, in ServiceNow and create a new runbook, I can just call this one uh, SharePoint demo. And again, PowerShell 5.1, uh, create. And let's find it. This. Let's put this one into to edit mode. So I'm just gonna paste in um, a little bit of PowerShell here so that I can I can generate the certificate using a, a runbook. Um, I will share this uh, this script down below. But uh, I mean, you can, as I said, you can use any any kind of way to to get to the certificate. Um, we're just gonna save this one, and then uh, then we're gonna click test. So we're just gonna provide a a password. Uh, SharePoint demo, certificate name, SharePoint, oh, search, and just click uh, create. This is going to give us the certificate that we can save in, in a PIM uh, format. So let me just open a text editor and put this one in. And let's just save this one. Let's call this one SharePoint uh, Cert PM. Save. Let's go back here. And then we also have the, the private key, which we're going to use for um, uh, here in, in our automation account. So let's save this one uh, as a variable. Create a new one. We're just going to call this one uh, SharePoint Certificate. Save it encrypted and put this one in here. Create. We're also going to 
gonna create another one called SharePoint. Get this uh, password. I'm also gonna save that encrypted and I'm just gonna copy this one. So again as well. Good. Good. So we need these two. Um, let's upload the certificate to uh, to our app. So um, here on the certificate, we're going to click upload, select the file, and then we're just going to pick the certificate that we just created here. Enter the description, we can call this add. Notice that you will have a start date and an expiration date. You may need to monitor this one so it doesn't expire. Then let's go back here on the overview. And then what we also need is the tenant ID. So let's copy this one and create a variable over here. Uh, SharePoint ID tenant. And you don't need to encrypt this one. There's no secret about that. And we also need to use the SharePoint. No, I say the SharePoint app ID. Um, let's go back here, and we have it right there. And paste this one. And this is also not a secret. So just uh, just save it like so. Now we have these these four. So let's uh, let's apply a template. So what we have down here is we have a SharePoint online template called new site. Let's replace the code that we have here. We don't need this anymore. So here you can see we have the input of site name, site title and owner and so on. And then we have the name here of the, the client ID variable and that was the, the SharePoint app ID here. Then we have the certificate um, variable and that's the SharePoint certificate here. Then we have the name of the variable containing the password. Let's put this in here. And then we have the tenant name variable. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Then we actually don't need the uh, this one. Let's just uh, remove this one uh, and create another one called the Share SharePoint tenant name so 2sk 2fl on uh, microsoft come and create and then let's use that instead of the id and then we also need the uri to the other uh, url sorry to the to the sharepoint side so let's create a variable for that And that's going to be TPS, 2SK, 2FL.sharepoint.com. And of course, you'll just put in your URL here. Uh, let's click Create. And then we're going to copy this one over here. So then we're going to go to this URI where you're doing the URI. Um, your name dash uh, admin sharepoint.com layout at int. I'll share this also in uh, in the comments below. So you're getting a page like this. Then we need to paste in the uh, the app ID. So we have that uh, here. Just copy it from here. Here, and put that in. Um, Mine here is in Danish, so it's probably going to be in a different language. So you can see how it found the um, everything here. So you can just put it in a local host here. And then, um, let's put local host in here, because we're not really going to use this redirect part. And then we're going to add some XML here, and also share this, uh, this part um, down below, and click Create. So this is gonna ask us if we have uh, 
faith in <laughs> in give, giving this uh, app access. So let's say that we trust this one. And then that's all good. Then we can go back to um, to our runbook here. And now we're actually ready. So um, so let's save this one. And let's publish it. Uh, before we proceed, so let's just try to click here on, on, on run. We put in an, uh, an owner, so this could be, uh, for instance, uh, my admin account here. On Microsoft.com. Uh, yeah, going to a demo. Just we're going to call the site and uh, title and um, site name. Yeah, why not call it the same? Let's just click create. So now the, the job is starting. So that all went very well. Let's uh, let's go over to SharePoint just to verify that we actually created a uh, a site. And um, so here we are in uh, in SharePoint. And uh, let's look at the uh, sites here. And there you have it, SharePoint demo test. And this is how it looks. That's all good. That's all good. So that's all good. Let's uh, let's make it possible to order this one from uh, from ServiceNow. So back here in ServiceNow, let's um, let's go under maintain items. Let's create a new one. We call this one a uh, new SharePoint. Let's just put it in, um, in the service catalog under Can We Help You? New SharePoint site and submit. And then we're going to add some, some variables because, as you remember, what we needed was um, for the uh, for the runbook to work was actually we needed this this owner we needed the site title and we needed the site name. Um, so let's just ask um, let's ask the user for that. So the first one would be site uh, name. This one needs to be mandatory. And this is going to be the first question. Save this one. Then we're gonna put in site title. Oops. That's question number two. Put in a let's just use the reference and then say it's the third and last question. This is going to be site owner. Site owner. Insert. Oops. Force me to say that this is a user. Of course, you can add any kind of uh, filter here. Um, so um, now we have these three inputs. If I click uh, try it here, you can see how it how it's going to look. Side name, side title, side owner. So that's that's all good. Now, as the site owner, well, I'm using the, the system administrator account here. Uh, so for that to work, of course, uh, uh, in this test scenario, the, the user needs to um, to be part of um, of the um, the domain that we're working with. To sk to fl on uh, Microsoft. So um, yeah, have in mind that there needs to be some some sort of a link between the service now user, of course, and and the user in uh, in your SharePoint. 
So that's all fixed. Let's go into uh, Flow Designer to create a flow. Let's create a new flow. We're gonna call this one. Um, let's call this a new uh, SharePoint site. Leave it as it is. I click on this on system but it's okay. Um, that's that's not so important. So the trigger for this one is going to be the service catalog. And the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to get out the service catalog um, variables, which is from the requested item that triggered this flow. And uh, we call this one uh, new SharePoint site. So you can see here we have these uh, three different variables available. And then we're gonna add an, um, a new action, use the automation app here, and start a job. Uh, the runbook that we're gonna use was called SharePoint uh, Demo. So let's key this one in. Uh, run on, we're gonna leave blank because we're just gonna run this directly in Azure, and the input will do a pipe separated list. So we need also to put in the, the input here, and the first thing that we need is the, is the site name. So I'm just going to separate that with a little pipe and put in the site title. And then lastly, we're going to need the owner, and that's where we're going to use the, the email here from the um, from the person selected as the owner. As a parent, we'll put in the requested item. You don't need to do that, but uh, you can do that. And then for reporting-wise, you can, of course, put in here how much time would it have taken you to do manually. So if somebody had requested this manually, if that was the process before, you can put this in here. Same thing with how how much was the lead time before. You can also put that in uh, in here. Um, then we can do some debugging, etc. if it fails. But let's just, um, let's just assume that everything went well. And so um, we'll just... Um, update the, um, the requested item here and set the state of it to um, to close complete and click done. Let's save this one. Of course here you may need to add something if, um, ah, let me just show you this real quick. So if this one failed, you can also add this in here. So uh, if we take the job here, Let's say if the um, if the status is not completed, uh, we can do like a, you know create an incident or whatever. You, you can put in any any kind of logic here. Let's um, say So for now we'll just do an um, let's just do an update record here, and let's update our requested item here and set the state to uh, closed incomplete, and then we'll add a, a work note here saying uh, run work failed with exception, and then we'll put in the exception from the job. So then you have a little bit of um of debugging here to work with. Let's, uh, let's do that and then just end the flow. Good. So we're getting the variables, we're starting the job to create the site. If this fails, we'll update the record to uh, the requested item to closed uh, skip, uh, closed incomplete, sorry, and end the flow. If it doesn't fail, we're going to update the requested item uh, to close complete. Let's save this. Let's activate it. And then let's jump back to our, our new uh, catalog item here. And um, and on the process engine, we'll select the flow here that we called a uh, new SharePoint site. Let's save this one. And let's try it out. And the site name could be uh, we're gonna call this one test from um, 
test from uh, serve, uh, search now uh, request. My title of the this is a test from a search now item, and a side one I'm just going to put in my uh, my system administrator account here. And we're going to click order now. Let's open up the request and see what happens. So we have the written number here. We have the different input here and we have on the related records, we have this job. And we can of course go into this job to see, you know, uh, what's going on. So we can see that it created a job, it's in status new, and these are the different inputs that it gave the, the job also see the ID here. And of course, we can follow the job log down here and see what uh, what happens as it goes along. Um, let's jump back to the requested item and uh, wait for it to complete. Okay, so now it closed incomplete, so it actually seems like something failed here. Let's see um, if I go in here. No, it didn't fail. Let's see, we probably made a a little mistake in our flow. Mm, what usually happens is that, you know, uh, if it's not complete. <laughs> yeah. Let's activate this one. But uh, yeah, that's what happens when you do, uh, do live uh, recordings. And um, anyway, all of this completed just fine. Uh, had I not uh, put in is instead of is not, uh, would have we would of course have have uh, gone down here. In the interest of time, I'm not going to run this again. Um, just uh, be assured that uh, this would have worked if I had not um, messed that part up. Um, and as you can see, there was no exception, so so all's good. But uh, just to be on the safe side, let's uh, let's jump over to SharePoint and verify that we actually got the site created. So here I am in, in, in SharePoint and you can see here we have the, ah, this is a test from a service now request. I'm here in this, so um, yeah, it all worked. So there you have it. This is how easy we can integrate service now with SharePoint using the automation app. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you.